Yeah, so it's an, it's an interesting story. So Omadom, and I mentioned in the last one, it stands for my demo. It's right. the word my demo backwards. But there there are a number of trends coming together that are pretty fascinating to me. And so one is this this whole shift in the buyer's journey. And what you just described was you, you wanted to learn some things prior to engaging that salesperson. But but that salesperson, that whole form process, uh, introduced a lot of friction to you. Right. Welcome to Canned Heat, brought to you by Liger Partners. We are marketing and operation experts bred for our skills and magic. I'm your host, the Dojo Master for Liger Partners, Eric Holtzclaw. I have a returning guest, Mike Glad, but he's going to be talking about a different topic today. So we had him on a couple of weeks ago with his company, The Crucible Group, and he brought up the concept or the idea of the buyer's journey, which yep. is is a place that I believe that marketing and sales often, that's where they connect. Right? Yes. Like that is the connection. It's like somewhere along this buyer's journey, marketing needs to hand it off to sales or vice versa. And, you know, you and I had an interesting conversation about uh, your translation to my belief system that, you know, the buyer's <laughs> journey. Is <laughs> that what it was? Yeah, I think so. Right. You, you said you were a curmudgeon and yeah, it yeah. took you a while. And, and I saw this sort of magically happen while I was in the middle of owning my research company. Yep. Like we saw <clears> the going from being a seller to being a buyer. And so you guys, you work specifically with a company that's kind of in that space. I, I do, I do. And it's to your to your point of the buyer's journey, I, I would even, I, I, to be provocative, I would say it this way, marketing owns more sales now than sales does. Mm. Marketing um, owns more proportionally of the buyer's journey. And in, in, in this in the case everywhere, certainly right. enterprise sales, it's a little different animal. But, but the in many cases now, sales manages the transaction. Yep. But the what happens before sales is involved uh, produces more of the aha moments for the buyer to make their decisions. And so, um, so yeah, I've, I've 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 come to the other side to, <laughs> to fully appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. And so the company which you're wearing a shirt. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, yes. wearing, I'm sporting the colors here. Uh, oh, Omidum. Omidum. And I yep. like the colors. They're very you similar. You like that? Yeah. yeah the, so uh, there they go. You know, like your park. Yeah, who knew? Yeah. Who knew? Yeah. <laughs> How that would all connect. Well, and what what I. I know enough about it to be dangerous. Okay. But I'm going to give you a scenario and let me know if this is where this fits, right? So, all right, all right. So I do operations for some clients and I do marketing for others. Okay. And so on the operational side, I'm often running into a tool or a software or something that I think will help the company. Yep. And, you know, some of them will you know, give you the free trial, which then means you get to get in there and stumble all around and mm -hmm. typically decide in two minutes whether or not you like it or not and you never go back. You know, some will then make you go through this like landing page and sign up for a demo and you got to get on a phone with a sales rep. And, oh, yeah. And a very funny example about that a couple of weeks ago, I was in the middle of looking at three different products, wasn't sure which one would really about fix my solution, right? Okay. So go to the first one and you know, there wasn't really a way to sign up for a trial. There wasn't really a way to request a demo. Like, so I moved on. Mm -hmm. Went to another one and they, um, they made me fill out this form. And so I, did you do it? I did because I wanted to see what the product oh, did, but right. I filled out the form. I went to the calendar to pick a time off the sales guys mm -hmm. thing, you know, his calendar, right? Yeah, like Calendly or yeah, something. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I picked it for like, and I couldn't get anything <clears throat> that worked for me or him for a week. It was like a week. Right. Right. And so I scheduled it and I then went on to another. <clears throat> another site that had kind of a good feeling of some video and some other stuff, but I still had to do some self-select on how it worked and all those kind of things. Well, I, I'd set up the demo on that second guy and I got off an airplane like a week later and I got this phone call from this phone number. Right. And I was like, who's that? Yeah. And so then two minutes, and I of course ignored it. Like, I don't know who that number is. I'm not answering that call. Yeah, I've been that phone number on you before, <laughs> so I understand. <laughs> and so then he called again, or whoever it was, called right. again. And I'm like, very insistent, right? And so then I stopped it again. And then they called the third time. And I answered the phone. I'm like, this is Eric. Who is this? Right, right, <laughs> right? right. And he was like, hi, this is such and such with whatever. And we have a demo scheduled for right now. Well, my plane had landed late. I was, I was like... I am not, and I have still not. I have still not done the demo. Yeah, 
Yeah, and I that got. window of interest is in many ways yeah, closed. Yeah, and I yeah. think I've already picked a solution. Yeah, sure, yeah. So yeah. Some other vendor got you to an aha moment. Yes. That, that came out with your aha moment. Right. Uh, more quickly, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I'm thinking that's kind of where you guys start to fill the gap. Yeah, so it's, a, it's an interesting story. So Omadome, and I mentioned in the last one, it stands for my demo. It's right. the word my demo backwards. But there, there are a number of trends coming together that are pretty fascinating to me. And so one is this this whole shift in the buyer's journey. And what you just described was you, you wanted to learn some things prior to engaging that salesperson. But but that salesperson, that whole form process uh, introduced a lot of friction to you. Right. Okay. And it's pretty interesting because the, the request a demo button on a website, if you go to a technology website, let's say you're looking at an HR system of some sort and you go to their website and you see the little request demo button and you click on it. Now, the industry average in technology is that 85% of the people that click on that button look at the form and, and they go, nope, not going to do it. They don't actually fill out the form. So 85% of the people who click that button don't do anything else. Bounce, abort the mission, whatever you want to call it. Okay. And, and so 15% then proceed to go And forward. that makes marketing very sad. Well, it does. I mean, if you think about marketing, the... The dollars you spend to get the person to click the You button. spend all this money yeah, driving right. somebody to the site, hoping for conversions, right. whatever you call it, an SQL, MQ, whatever your, your, your uh, naming convention is. But 85% of those people leave. Right. Okay. And, and of that 85%, certainly some subset are, are not qualified or whatever anyway. But a big chunk of that 85% are doing what you did. They're going to the path of least resistance with the next vendor that's on their radar. Yeah. And so the whole process of getting request demo, going through the qualification call with the salesperson, scheduling the demo, typically takes about two and a half weeks. Mm -hmm. And it's unbelievable. I'm sure there's some companies that do it a lot better than my story that's similar to that was I got a call out of the blue in November of last year. Um, and a guy said, hey, I saw you filled out a form on our website. And he, and he named the company. I had never heard of the company. And I said, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm drawing a complete blank on this. And I said, when did I hit your website and request this demo? And he said, well, hang on. Let me look at the notes in the system. Okay, so, and he, he says, you, it was in March. And I said, Mar March of this year. And did, <laughs> I said, I still don't remember. He said, oh, well, we've had a name change since then. And I'm like, okay, no, wait a second. So I hit your website in March. You're calling me in November different company I mean and it was just a picture of wow yeah and so anyway we could tell a story and not hit that urgency need I mean buyers nowadays are used to like I have this thing I want it now I'm interested in looking for it yeah it's it's the you know you can call it the app effect right you can call it the autonomous buyer but I want to research and do my homework when and where and how I want to do it yeah and if you make me adhere to somebody's sales process um, chances are I'm gonna reject it. Yeah. and so and so what Omadum has done is is recognize some of the very dramatic trends that are going on in video. So as an example, video uh, represents about 70% of all internet traffic. 70%. 70%. And how-to videos, and I don't have the number in front of me, but I think it's something like 67% of all internet traffic uh, as relates to videos are how-to. Yeah, I renovated <clears throat> an entire 1,500-square-foot basement yeah. on how-to videos video search capability built on Amazon Web Services um, that allows you to search within a video. And the main application is around... Okay, so that again. So you've got a, a video mm -hmm. and this allows me to search within the within video? Within the video. Yeah. Now think about uh, this. Why can we have had that for my 1,500 square foot well, you got uh, it. basement exactly. installation? Because there would be parts of the video and I'm like, I don't need the first... Dude, I got yeah. all the product and the whatever and don't <clears> tell me where to shop for it. I just need you to show me where the... Thing goes the, in where the spout. one spot that's yeah, exactly right, right, it right. And, and and there's so many applications it's funny i see the canned heat um when and you know i've talked about the age difference um when i see canned <laughs> heat i i think about the the rock band that played at woodstock yeah. and but it and it makes me think of um i'm tying this together just okay got it. It. Um, i'll hang with you I, so. it, probably before your time but do you remember the band the buggles do you remember yeah, ring a bell? So. yeah. you don't remember what they're, in, they're known for no. they were they were the first rock video played on mtv oh yeah 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 video, video, killed killed the radio killed radio video. Yeah, yeah 40 years ago yes yes this year and and our uh, our chief marketing officer um marie patterson's i think just written a blog on, on this but it's funny because you think about the video 40 years ago we still consume video the exact same way yeah okay it's Play, pause, fast forward, rewind, right, stop. Right, right. Forty years, same thing. VHS, yeah. whatever. Yeah. 
And, and what, what this capability allows you to do is use natural language uh, processing that's happening behind the scenes to get to a specific spot in a video. And Very so, interesting. Yeah. So, if you're, so, for instance, if you were looking at, let's say, an, an HR application, you're an HR manager, and you say, we need to bring an HR uh, software solution in here to help us manage the hiring process. Yeah. Okay. And so you've heard some names and terms, whatever. And one of the first things you're going to say is, well, okay, it needs to integrate with uh, our payroll processing. Right. Right. And so the, the question is, does your solution integrate with ADP? Right. Well, you would like to think you could type that in, maybe find that. But what if you could go to a website for a company you're looking at and just type in the question? Yeah. Do you integrate with ADP? Right. Because it, it, the, the role of a salesperson in the buyer's journey, early on and 20 years ago, uh, and the reason sales was more involved is we depended on a salesperson as the conduit to information to yeah, us. Yeah, answered all our questions. Answered all our questions. Yeah, right. But now we don't want to involve a salesperson until we're 70 to 90% through yeah, the buyer's yeah, journey yeah. according yeah, to... marketing drove you to the dealership yeah. and yeah. the sales guy then told you all the details on the car. And now you go in and go, I know everything about the car. Yeah. <laughs> Do you right. have one? Yeah, okay, <laughs> right. where are the keys? Let me fill out the form. I already bought it online. Yeah. And, and so the, this capability allows... Um, B2B customers or prospects to do much more learning on their own autonomously. Again, sort of this app effect. I want to go in and experience technology early. Yeah. Um, and it allows me to go in and have access to that. And so, so it's nice. And I love that because in the decision making world, the decision makers have, they're looking for slices. Yep. Does it do this? Does it do that? Does it do that? And so you end up in the two to 12 minute video you know, trying to explain all the features and functions, which is what I may want someone who's going to implement the thing or start using it, yeah. right? And I'll tell you about implementation in a second, but, yeah, but go they, ahead. Yeah. You want them to do, like, I don't want to do that, right? Well, like, how I'm many times have you sat in a technology evaluation? Right. And the room is you and eight or ten coworkers, right? And the vendor's up there doing a demo, doing whatever. And you're sitting there on your phone or th your mind's 100 miles away. You're in there to ask. You want one question. Right. You've only got one question you care about. And so, and so with this capability, um, it can make the buying process much more efficient. And there's also a lot of research out there that says when somebody shares a video in the buying cycle, the chances of that opportunity closing grow up, uh, go up something like 34%. Yeah, yeah. Or 81%. I get well, oh, I the, so many numbers. But, yeah, well, and the mm -hmm. effort is so much less. Like if I send you this long email or a brochure or whatever, you're like, oh, I can read this yeah. thing and find what I'm looking for. But if a video, at least it's... Consume it. I can consume it in a way that's faster, you know. But I, this makes it even faster. Answer. Makes it even faster. Yeah, yeah. And and it's funny. You think about it. Um, you, we talked about the request for demo thing, and and you know, it's funny. B two B sales has always been revered as this leader in how to sell, right? right? But in many ways, it's still very much behind business to consumer. Let me give you an example. Um, you go to the Apple store to buy an iPhone. Yeah. Okay. And you walk in, and you see the iPhone sitting there behind a panel, a pane of glass. And you say to the salesperson, I'd like to see the iPhone 10, right? And he says, okay, I'll tell you what. What I'm going to do is ask you to fill out a form, okay? And then I'm going to have a salesperson call you, <laughs> right? You can come back in next week. And you can come back in next week, <laughs> right. and, we'll, and we'll let you, if you're qualified, we'll let you actually touch the phone. Right. And by the way, I want to take you to drinks some, somewhere before or after. Yeah, well, okay, yeah, I mean, just adding more <laughs> steps along the way. But, but the point is, we don't tolerate that yeah. in how we buy technology as consumers, and, and we're all now consumers of business technology. Right. And it's this app effect. I want to touch it, feel it, use it, decide yes, no, and move on. And so when I'm asked to go through some long seller-driven uh, process, we, we reject it. Yeah. And so what, what our capability, we believe, will allow companies to do, one of the one of the use cases is experience products and services early. So it go you know, a different place. Um, when you think about the cloud, Salesforce.com tends to be held up as the poster child appropriately for ushering in the cloud. Mm -hmm. And when they went to market 20 years ago or uh, 17, 18 years ago, it was an enterprise sales model. Right. And it was salespeople saying, I'm going to target this patch, I'm going to sell to you, et cetera. And then from there, we went to this shift to a content led, some of the inbound um, stuff, whether it's the Marketos and HubSpots of the world. But there was very much, and this aligns with, with your world. If we build great content, blog, social, website, whatever, and attract people to us, 
Um, that will start their buyer's journey, and then it'll funnel into your sales cycle from there. And, and what's happening now is there's this next wave that is the product-centric go-to-market hmm. um, uh, approach. And one of your favorite companies, Slack, yeah. is, is, a, is the poster child of that. Sa uh, Slack's built a billion-dollar business um, with no salespeople yeah. because they position a technology that says, um, here it is, it's intuitive, touch it, feel it, use it, trial. Yeah, low threshold. Low threshold, freemium uh, model, and you go in and grab it and use it. And so, and so what we're seeing is a shift in the market where, where most technology companies, whether they go all the way over to a Slack model, I mean, that's not going to be appropriate for a lot of companies, but they need to have a more product-centric, product-accessible approach to the prospects. Yeah, agreed, and, and yeah. it's so interesting because you've been thinking about it, because I built data centers back in the day, a million dollars in data centers to put things in on the enterprise level, and nowadays you go out and you're like, what's the per person for whatever fee, and how do I, yep. and it, just the barrier to both choice and looking at competitors is so much, you gotta, you gotta get them faster, get them to understand yep. what it is, how it fits, so this is, I love the fact, I guess I'd, I hadn't heard about the feature about being able to search within the video. That's oh, you really search nice. within the video. Yeah. And I'll tell you a couple of use cases. And, and, and in the evaluation part, I'm, I'm bouncing around. I get excited about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, with the, the cloud and the low barrier to entry, 10 years ago, you had two or three competitors. Right. And now there are 20 competitors right. for everything. And, and so that vendor that does the best job of helping that prospect get that aha moment early, um, it tends to it tends to be you know, very favorable. Um but the search within the video, so the request to demo process is a great example of that. And so what we're saying in many cases is, look, in addition to or instead of your request demo form, and we're not saying demos are bad, okay? Right, I mean, right, right. Yeah. But what if you had a link that said, uh, you know, try it now, yeah. or interactive demo, or intelligent demo, where you can go in and just start typing questions, and videos will answer those questions. Another great use case um, that I'm very excited about is a prospect we're working with right now that, that has a software that they sell to dance studios and gymnastic studios, what have you. And they've got great analytics on what happens with their customers. And one bucket of their customers are do-it-yourselfers that want to implement it on their own and uh, don't want you to hold their hands. And then the other bucket are the hand holders, right? Well, the, the attrition that they have of people that buy their software and don't use it is unsettling to them. And they've gone through these analyses to see, and, and it's, it's very obvious, it's the do-it-yourselfers that buy the software but never implement it, yeah. okay? And and so one of the use cases here is th this particular company has tremendous training videos. Right. And so what if you just allowed to do it yourself first, ask questions, get the video of how to do it, go do it on their own and what have you. So so the uh, my mind is a little bit blown on all the potential applications of searchable video um, within the business to business world. So yeah, we're having some fun with it. Lots of applications for it. So yeah, that's very cool. Disrupt very cool model. And very you know, great for the training thing. I see that a lot too. Because like once it's in, then how do you get people to use it? And understand well, and you think about and, training. Yeah. Uh, there, there's so many um, companies with some critical mass have lots of training videos. So if I come on board with a company and, I, and I've gone through a three or four week boot camp, right. you know, I retain... 18% of that. <laughs> maybe. And, maybe. Lucky, right. and so what if I could go in and just say, um, you know, how do we do X? And it take me right to that certain spot in that video versus having to fast forward rewind through an hour long video to get to that particular topic. Very nice. Well, we started this conversation about sales enablement, but it's got a much, much wider span of things that you guys can do with that. That's a very yeah, interesting. Prospect enablement. Intelligent That's, video. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Well, thank you so much for telling us about it. Yeah. It's yeah. good to have you back. So we've been talking today with Mike Ladd. Today he's been here with Omadum. Omadum, you said it right. That's right. And so you've been listening to Canned Heat. Are you ready to unleash the beast?